it's that time of the day again. I don't know why I'm wearing sunglasses indoors. Uh, I'm gonna go for a run and see what happens when I wear six devices while running. Uh, Apple, Samsung, let me just show you. So on my left wrist, I have the Apple Watch 6, the OnePlus watch, and then on my right, I have the Garmin Vivo Active 4. It's going on its one year birthday. The Samsung Galaxy Fit 2. And then in my left, on my left foot, I have the Polar Grip X. I'm gonna see what happens when I wear the Fossil Collider HR. I know, that's a lot of data. And then on my chest, right there, I am wearing the Polar H10 heart rate monitor. Yeah, that is uh, a lot of gadgets to wear. Uh, normally people just wear one, but uh, I thought it'd be fun to wear almost all of them that I have. Uh, there's a couple that I just, trying to wear more than two watches on one wrist is extremely difficult. It's just really uncomfortable. And I, uh, yeah, so about two on each wrist and one in each uh, compression sock is about the best I can do. But uh, I'm going to be running more now that it's summer and I'll be doing more tasks. I probably should just focus on two, just one against the other, but I thought this might be fun. Time to work out. Strange thing going on. So when I walk, the audio is just fine. Looking to a little uh, podcast of David Sedaris and my Bluetooth headphones are working great. But as soon as I start running, it starts skipping. So now that I'm running, the audio keeps going in and out. Maybe it's the touch controls? I don't know. It's really annoying. It just stopped again. Time for a little update. Samsung's a tenth of a mile behind. Let's check the other two devices. Apple 1.12, OnePlus uh, 1.06. Hmm. It's 2.181. Oh, thanks. Okay. Uh, well, we don't know what that one is yet. Resume. Yes, I want to resume. Yeah, that's why you don't wear gadgets in your socks. I might have paused it when I took it out. But on this one, this one has a screen lock. Whoa, you know, this happened last time. Wow, it's over a half a mile off. That's not good. And it does have screen lock, great visibility. So if I try to push the buttons, it's all locked. So that's cool. Now, as far as visibility, Garmin, awesome. Samsung, I went cranked up to a five, but as you can tell, even in direct sunlight, it can be a little difficult to read. Apple. Great job as always. OnePlus, not bad, not bad. I have auto brightness going, so it's probably at full brightness in the direct sunlight. Okay, let's work out some more and do some stairs. A lot of stairs. And man, is it smoky today. I should probably run indoors, probably. Running tip number one. Water fountains are your friend. Never turn down a water fountain. It's free and, you know, at least get a mouthful. And then hopefully you won't be completely dehydrated when you're done. I once did a run in Oregon, like 19 years ago, almost 20 years ago, and it was felt like 80% humidity. We ran five miles and I drank one of those 64 ounce Gatorades and I still didn't go to the bathroom for about three hours. I was so dehydrated because I didn't hydrate enough before the run and I didn't hydrate during the run and I should have hydrated more than just one container of Gatorade. So there you go. Water fountains are your friend. Quick little break to grab a thumbnail. Is there such a thing as too many gadgets? I would say yes, including the iPhone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Boy, if I had that aura ring, I could do nine. Okay, aura ring, come out with uh, your next version so I can buy it. Running with nine devices, challenge accepted. 
You know what, I was wrong earlier. It wasn't eight gadgets, it was actually nine because I was also running with the OnePlus Buds Z for audio. <laughs> so yes, as the founder of Gadgets Anonymous, I, I admit I am a good addicted to gadgets. Uh, I cannot lie. Let's take a look at the stats. The 5K run is over. Well, I just got some good news from Garmin. Three new records, longest run, 3.44 miles, fastest 5K, 47 minutes. Okay, I did do some walking. And fastest mile, 11.38. Okay, that's not quite true. I've run much faster this year. But it was on a treadmill, so maybe Garmin doesn't know that. Well, hey, brownie points nonetheless. Thanks, Garmin. Just stop the fossil, 3.0, cadence, calories, all right. Whoops, whoops, almost dropped it. That's about it. 8,000 steps, nice. Let's take a look at Polar. Oh, five miles. That is, oh, that's kilometers. Peter, you are such a ninny. All right, well, we'll stop that. Now I have to convert it. Should have waited till I got back in the studio. Recording ended, saving. But hey, at least you get to see how awesome the screen is outdoors. Okay, heart rate. Heart rate zones, nice. Energy, 700 calories. Carbs, protein, so I mostly burn carbs. Overall pace. And speed zones. Nice. Great stats, as always. Altitude, all right. I do wish this thing counted flights of stairs, but it doesn't. So auto lapped every kilometer. We'll take a look on the web and it'll be more detailed. Not too bad. All right, still is pretty high, 125. Let's see what Apple says. Oh, 124, okay. 127. One plus, a little off, 131. There we go. It takes a little bit to catch up. And Apple coming in at 127. Oh, might be the uh, smoke in the air. A fun little thing I do when I run, I collect trash. So I ran three miles and I thought I should at least pick up three bottles. And then I found this bag. So I ended up taking uh, three plastics and a tin can. I highly recommend we all follow this when we're running and make the world a better place. And yes, please recycle. Go to daily summary, which I'm already on, and then I can scroll down, cups of water, and view activity. So it does show in great detail your map, but this was kind of my home area, so we're gonna skip that. So pace, average time, distance, elevation gain, calories, all that really good stuff. It shows which watch you ran with, it shows which shoes you wore, and then there's the elevation chart, and then as you scroll your mouse across the screen, you you can see all that data. There's run cadence, and then we get down to the stats and the nitty gritty, elevation gain, uh, mostly the, a flat run, laps, there's segments, time and zones, and then you can see the little, just really good detail of uh, steps per minute, and then time and zones. So 44% in zone five, so somewhat of a hard run, and yeah, zone four, 26, and so on, and then I can go back to stats. So really good statistics provided by Garmin, and this is an older watch. This one is a little over a year old now. Actually, I've had it for a little over a year. The technology is probably closer to two years, and then it even logs the weather and lets me know that there was smoke when I was running. Uh, according to the Apple Watch and nearby health info, yeah, the uh, weather was pretty bad and I probably should have stayed inside. Okay, next we'll go to Polar because they also have an online training history. And for one reason or another, my run <laughs> got switched from Saturday to Thursday. 
I haven't used the Polar Watch in over maybe two weeks and the battery died. I should have synchronized and I didn't. Anyway, so for some reason it thinks the workout was yesterday. I've contacted support about that. Hopefully they can fix it. So right at the top of the screen, you have the summary, 58 uh, duration, distance, average heart rate. There's the zones, which somewhat coordinate with Garmin, so that's good. I feel both Garmin and Polar have pretty good heart rate stats. And then here's the split into laps. And I can split these into one mile laps if I want. Look at power max, average pace, cadence, HR max, all that info based upon laps. And then there's the automatic laps as well. So you have your zones. And again, just like Garmin, as you scroll your mouse cursor over, you can look at in great detail what your stats are if you're doing sprints, you know, right at mile one, or if you want to do laps. You can do that as well. And then for some reason, oh, I think this is when I was taking a, a thumbnail of the watch and that's why it zeroed out there. Anyway, pretty good stats, pretty good stats. Back to Garmin. You know, it's just kind of a personal preference. I kind of prefer the layout of Garmin, especially how all this data is displayed. I was kind of disappointed on the flights of stairs. I actually climbed a lot more stairs than Garmin said. And I'm looking at my watch right now and it only says 13 flights. Did it before and after and pretty close on the steps. The only one that was really off was the Polar Grit because, well, it moved the workout. So I don't know about that one, but as far as everyone else, here's Apple Watch. That was 7,000 and change. Both Apple, OnePlus, and Garmin, really close. OnePlus, about at least 150 below everyone else. The Fossil Collider, which I was wearing inside my left sock, as you saw in the videos, that one was a little low. So apparently when you wear it on your foot, you get less steps, which I thought was unique. Calories, all really similar. Fossil malfunctioned and Polar Grit was pretty good. It was 690. And then distance, they were all somewhat close. The Samsung Galaxy Fit 2 is proving not to be that accurate when it comes to GPS. And then we have uh, OnePlus actually did all right, but still kind of all within that 3.3 except for the Samsung Galaxy Fit, even the Polar Grit turned out to be within the distance of everyone else in the end. The watches were close, except for uh, OnePlus was really low on the average and several beats higher than the max on the others, but all within the 170s, so no huge spikes. And then battery life, uh, yeah, the one that took the biggest hit was Garmin. It went down quite a bit, but that watch is older, whereas all the other devices are newer. Uh, Apple Watch took a big hit as well. It dropped 15 battery percentage points. And then the average pace, yeah, it was kind of up and down among the other ones. And then flights of stairs, one plus, really lost that one. It only counted two and only 89 feet, where everyone else was near 100, so. The elevation reading on the OnePlus watch came in last place. So there are the stats. All right, and those are the results of my run with too many gadgets. I, I don't recommend running with as many as, well, I don't recommend running with as much technology as I did. It was a bit overwhelming. I wanted to see if I could do it. Uh, today's total was nine, including my phone and the headphones and the heart rate strap. Here, let me let me show you. Here are the all the gadgets that I ran with today. The OnePlus watch, the Samsung Galaxy Fit 2, Polar Grit X, which I got last year, Apple Watch 6, the Darth Vader, Garmin VivoActive 4. This is the Fossil Collider HR. And again, if you just skipped ahead, there are chapter headings down below, by the way, in the description. Both of these were worn in my uh, compression socks. And the audio today was the OnePlus Buds Z. These are the Stephen Harrington design buds. Kind of, kind of cool, actually. I like them. And then around my chest, as you saw in the intro, was the Polar H10. 
pretty good. I, I find it to be very accurate, actually. And that's it. That's all I wore. So now you're wondering, well, which one is my favorite of the six? That's a tough question because I'm torn as of late between Apple and Garmin, my two favorite, if I had to only wear two devices. This one for the smartwatch features and this one for the athletic feedback when I'm done with my workouts. As far as battery life among all these, that's gonna go to these two, the Fossil HR. This is a hybrid smartwatch. This one will last a good, oops, upside down. <laughs> this one will last a good two weeks, and so will this one. If you don't use always on display, which is currently enabled. With AOD, that's less about five days. This one, as far as a little fitness tracker, it's not bad, thus, Brings me to, well, we'll just do that in another video. I guess you could call all this, if I can fit them all in my hands. Whoop! <laughs> this would be uh, tech debt while running. And that's it, that's all I have for the run today. That was just a 5K run. I'll be doing more running and cycling and swimming and walking and I don't know, maybe some pickleball. Maybe we'll do some stats on pickleball and also rowing. I'm gonna try a little more rowing this year because a lot of watches now are tracking that, including the OnePlus. Thanks again for watching. Thank you so much for your time. And yes, let the credits roll for the Paramount Kid. And we'll end with this one. Goodbye.